What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 243 of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk podcast. I am your host, Tony Mango. Joining me on the panel is Drew White. It doesn't matter who's wrong or right. Just beat it. No one wants to beat it if Drew's telling them to. Beat it. <laughs> we have Kalen Ferris. Ooh. Hey, oh, finally, my mic is on. Hey, I'm here, and uh, I'm I'm ready to do a good podcast thing. And <laughs> we have Stephen Wago. One day, one day, we will have a normal fucking introduction to an episode of Smack Talk. And then it'll be awkward, because it'll be like, so, that's that's our intro? Oh. That's normally, like, our icebreaker. Where did we come from here? How do I make it funny? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, if you can't tell by the way that things are structured with just the titles of everything, different setup again this week. We're still trying to figure out what we're going to do with uh, reorganizing things. And because we have the WWE draft to talk about, as well as Battleground predictions, that's basically two main events. So what we're going to be doing here, hot tags are coming up in part one instead. Part two is going to be the draft. Part three is going to be the ask him and the rest hold combined. Then we're going to get into the battleground, and then we're going to round it all out with our fantasy league stuff, because with the draft, some new people are brought into the mix. That's going to be pretty interesting. But as I just said, we have the hot tags up first. These are some different news and rumors and other stories and stuff that have gone down recently over the past few days in WWE and elsewhere, if we necessarily need to talk about that stuff. And not a whole lot have been happening because we've been doing much of the draft, but we do have a couple of pretty interesting things. A lot of it is with legalities, oddly enough. Uh, we have a dispute over the rights to the name Cody Rhodes and Swoggle, and WWE's cracking down on people using photographs that were used from pictures that they took in WWE, like if they're trying to promote things like that, they use like a picture of Horn Swoggle, and you know, that's kind of not cool. They're also taking away some t-shirts of mine, God damn it. Uh, we have a big set of 53 people that have been suing WWE for various reasons. That's pretty interesting. We have the Brock Lesnar thing. So uh, let's kind of group this together, but let's start off with the, the rights names stuff. Do you guys think that Cody Rhodes should be allowed to just use that Cody Rhodes name? I, I think... think that it's disrespectful um, to the memory of Dusty to not let his son continue with it. I think they've shown a lack of disrespect to the family, again, as they always have. It's a shitty thing to do. They shouldn't even be disputing it. Even if they have the rights, they should just let it go. It's ridiculous. It's petty. And this is simply them lashing about back at Cody for leaving the company. I thought that they had some kind of deal where they could still sell his merchandise or something along those lines. Well, that might not be the case anymore because apparently he was mad that that got leaked. I, I know... Uh, during the draft yesterday, I saw him tweet something about you don't need paint where he was going, and he pro he was promoting uh, Ring of Honor, I think Final Battle, hmm. and so I he was throwing some shade at when Finn Balor was drafted, I believe, with that tweet. I say let him keep the name. I mean, I know it's not his legal name, but it's it's not like a really super branded thing. It sounds like a normal name. It's what people know him by, and like you said, with Dusty, just let him keep the name. And it's different, because it's like, this is Dusty Rhodes, Cody Rhodes, Dustin Rhodes, like, shouldn't it be kind of grandfathered in? It's not yeah. like The Undertaker, mm -hmm. where it's well, a character the they made. The reason this is exactly. so shitty, they just had a fucking tag tournament not too long ago in the memory of Dusty Rhodes, in which the two sons fucking awarded the trophy, and mm -hmm. they've been doing all this media in memory of Dusty and talk so highly whenever they talk about the history of NXT, and to go shit on his son like this, fuck them. Hmm. Yeah. Let's move on Petty. to the Brock Lesnar side of things. Anti-doping policy violations, potential suspension from UFC for two years or more, possibly a WWE suspension. Wago, I'm going to you first on this. What do you think? So there's a variety of different things this could be. So Brock Lesnar has a... Uh, being found, what was it, two tests have come back um, as positive for uh, a trace or a metabolite of something. Rumor has it that it's inhaler medicine. Uh, that comes out of his gym, leaked by certain training partners, but who knows the truth to that. Uh, but it popping up a couple of times is actually probably better for Brock's case that he can blame it on that. 
Um, if it's a situation where he did use this, it was just inhaler medicine and not PEDs, he'd still be in trouble with USADA because he did not um, disclose that he was using it. So my question is, what would inhaler medicine of any sort, how would that help him if it, if it was something that was on the ban list? It's, there's a lot of things that's on the banned list um, that aren't don't have PED um, benefits. Well, shoot, I remember they had that big thing with marijuana a few years ago where one of the DS brothers went off about that was actually, shit. You saw that it didn't actually bust them for that. That was the uh, Nevada Athletic State Commission. Oh, okay, my bad. Um, but as far as this goes, there's a lot of things that you'll find on the you saw the ban list that aren't don't have PED qualities, but the reason they're on there is because it can be used to mask something, or it could be used to give a false uh, po uh, false positive on a test. Uh, so, like uh, you kind of mix that with another drug and then blame it on that sort of a thing? Yeah, so take an example of John Jones right now. He's just got busted for using two estrogen blockers. Well, estrogen isn't going to do too much as far as changing your physical makeup and making you super strong, man. But what it does do is mask uh, certain supplements that you take. That's why it's on the ban list, and that's why he's facing up to two years right now. Uh, another thing that MMA fighters are also doing right now is, in John Jones's situation, he will take the he'll actually blame a tainted supplement because you know most of those supplements come from fucking China, and who knows what really goes into them. Mm. Um, a lot of these. Oh man, Pro I got the lead paint flavor. <laughs> a lot of these protein powders that you uh, buy at your local GNC, well, uh, they've actually been tested and proven to be contaminated in some way and have given off false positives. So Brock's also got that outlet if it's something more, but we'll see which option he decides to take. Regardless, I think he gets a six-month ban from the sport, but um, he could be facing a two-year if it's anything that's uh, too serious like a PED. Does not reflect well on WWE, at the very least. My, the biggest thing that I'm interested in, let's say he does get popped for something that's on USADA's ban list, but isn't on the WWE's ban list. Does the WWE do what they did with Billy Gunn and, right. ban and punish him, or if it doesn't have any PED qualities and is not on their ban list, do they just ignore it? I think well, they're going to ignore it just because it's Brock Lesnar. I I think they we've kind of gotten that answer because they had him drafted and they haven't mentioned it on just television yet or on like any apps or website for the most part other than like a short statement about him wrestling at SummerSlam. Well, so, that's also because USADA hasn't ruled him guilty yet. That's true, I suppose. But eh, it is what it is. If if he did take some type of PED, it sucks knowing that. But at the same time, dude, guy was fucking jacked at two hundred. Oh, yeah. When, when I heard that he was popped for a violation, I was not surprised at all. But what did surprise me is that we did see him drafted so early still. You know, yeah. I, I thought that might affect that. But I guess, you know, nothing's been proven yet. So we're going to have to wait until all the facts come in to really make a full decision. But they're still promoting him at SummerSlam. So I don't think they do. It's Brock Lesnar. If anything, if they're like, hey, Brock, uh, you don't need to work at SummerSlam. He'd be like, sweet. I'm just going to sit at home and do nothing that whole time. <laughs> It's just a paycheck to him. They'll have oh, sure. him show up at some other time. So it wouldn't be a punishment to make him not show up. It might look bad in the media type of ways, and it might hurt his image. But other than that, it, it doesn't hurt Brock Lesnar too much. Lesnar's, no, image can't, Lesnar's image can't be tainted after his babyface turn at UFC. Fucking America! <laughs> <laughs> but I think it might be bad for uh, locker room morale, though, You know, saying that Certain guys, and I know I realize that certain guys technically are, but above the rules, if you're going to, you know, let Lesnar slide for that mm -hmm. and, you know, and who else are you going to let slide for that? You know, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, John Cena, where do you draw the line? So well, I they, think they, that's an important part of it. They drew the line at Roman Reigns, at least. They they banned him, not banned him, but they suspended him for a suspended. month or, yeah, but still, that's something. They're not going to ban ev him for two years. Everybody kind of knows that Brock's on his own fucking rules and... Let's face it, he's not even around enough to probably be tested by WWE. I doubt he's ever taken a drug test. Oh, I, I wouldn't uh, be surprised. Maybe one over the course of the past mm -hmm. few years, and it was like, hey, Brock, are you going to pass this or fail it? I'm going to pass it. Okay, but, well, then now we'll take it kind of a uh, thing. The thing is, a number of times before, the, I remember before UFC 200, I was reading reports after this came out that he, he supplied UFC a number of drug tests before he even committed to the 200 date. That, and they all came back positive, and there was nothing wrong with it. So 
It, I think it's weird that two randomly popped up right before or during the event. So, um, it could just be two weird tests. I mean, you yeah, know what but... I think? You know what I think? He got vigorously tested, and I mean, like, more so than most guys are. I think it was a ridiculous number in the space of two uh, weeks, uh, in which Mark Hunt only got tested once throughout the entire lead up to the fight. Um, and I, I think Usado had it out for him, and I say that because. There was some misinformation given out that Brock Lesnar was getting an exemption from um, you Usada entirely. So he wasn't going to get drug tested. That's not what it was at all. What he got an exemption for is that he got to fight. He got basically a pass by Usada to fight, even though he hadn't been on the roster for four months to go through their pre testing. Mm. Total misunderstanding, um, partially on shitty uh reporters doing like you know their uh clickbait headlines um so yeah like that i think they had it out for him and i think they were intent on finding something because to kind of make themselves not seem like guilty parties yeah I, i like maybe i'm just paranoid but i don't remember the exact statistics so i don't want to just throw out random numbers but the amount he was tested beforehand is fucking ridiculous I bet he was just walking around going, I don't have any blood left. <laughs> Can somebody please give me some cookies? <laughs> well, continuing on here from the Brock Lesnar talk, we've got another thing that's going on. About 53 people for uh, different performers of WWE's past are all in this lump lawsuit. And uh, some of those names, just going to read some of them off real quick. Road Warrior Animal, King Kong Bundy, Paul Ordnorf, Jimmy Snuka, Jazz, Henry Godwin, Judy Martin, Chavo... Adam Baum, people that aren't doing much right now, obviously. <laughs> Even Earl Hebner is a part of this. Well, he's just bitter that he fucking got fired for selling bootleg WWE merchandise. Oh, well, here's this thing with this lawsuit. It started off as being about neurological issues. Now there's a report going around for the most ridiculous shit. This is some of the complaints, or I don't even know how some of these are a complaint, that are lumped into this lawsuit thing. Road Warrior Animal says he was threatened with fines for wearing jeans on an airplane and changing his 7 a.m. flight to a later one. I can maybe justify the idea of, like, if you did get fined, but you didn't. You were threatened with fines. Uh, King Kong Bundy was fined for missing a show. Yeah. Yeah. You missed a show. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Omar Atlas. I don't know who this guy is. I don't remember him at all. Although he was well known, he was eventually trans- transformed by the WWE into a quote jobber to the stars, and by 1993 he was directed for two hundred dollars a night to quote put the WWE stars over, meaning he was asked to repeatedly lose in order to make the WWE headliners look better. That's your fucking job. Yeah, what the hell? You're gonna sue because you didn't get booked to win matches. You got paid to lose matches. The only thing I could... like, Can they technically like fine an independent contractor? That That's the only thing I think they might actually have a leg to stand on, because WWE is actually terrified of someone challenging that whole independent contractor status, because it's made up out of total horseshit. Mm. That I can understand, but when you get to, like, Slick... As recently as April 2016, WWE paid Ken Johnson, this is his real name, $2,500 to induct a wrestler who died at age 41 into the Hall of Fame. You're going to be mad about that? <laughs> you made 2500 bucks to induct Big Boss Man, and you were upset? You should be honored that they wanted you to do that, and you got paid to do it. And you agreed. Yeah, you could Dish. say no. That... Like, what? Why is that involved in a lawsuit? I can understand the ones where it's like, uh, it says Jim Brunzel wrestled 300 nights per year and, like, basically had no time off. Yeah, you can you, you kind of work that into the lawsuit and go, you know, we were really beaten down and they kept making us do it and kept uh, telling us that we shouldn't really get checked out and we didn't get enough downtime. That I get. But... It's like, well, you're going to be mad because you lost matches? It's fake, <laughs> you know? That's ridiculous. I'm sure all these guys have some sort of contract with the company. And if the company 
somehow fails on certain part of the contract, sure, they have a point to dispute that. But if they don't, then they're just bitching about nothing. So I, th- I think it's fair only because this is something that the NFL has been dealing with for the past few years now as more of these tests have come out for concussion-related stuff. So I think it's fair. I don't think it'll work because, you know, at the time we didn't know as much about what we know now. So it's different. But I think going forward, if uh, people were to get severely injured with concussions, I think they have a, a right of some sort. But it's kind of like... I don't think the WWE is liable for anybody getting a concussion. The fact is, all of these guys didn't start wrestling in the WWE. They started wrestling because they wanted to get into it for whatever stupid reason most wrestlers get into it for. Mm. And they've been taking concussions and bumps since day one. And there's all this, like, racist gimmick stuff, too, which is, like, I guess it's supposed to be, like, a character witness sort of a kind of thing. It says... Ahmed Johnson selected the name Ahmed Johnson over the WWE suggestion of the ring name Buck. Well, guess what? It's a Buck. fucking television show with characters. Not all characters are good characters. Right, and wh- mm-hmm. what's the problem with Buck? That's not a racist <laughs> thing. Like, if he would have gone with Buck Johnson, okay, you're Buck Johnson. Is Ahmed, like, oh, man, that's so much better. I shouldn't sue you later on or whatever. Oh man, I'm so much better at be a better name. No, see, uh, a racist name would have been Laquan Jav- Javaris. Yeah, like even that kind of stuff, you can't really sue them for just having poor taste, you know? <laughs> like yeah. a- Akeem is on there, Akeem the African Dream, and they're talking about how it's stereotypically black. Yeah, that was a bad well, that was decision the point of in the retrospect. Gimmick. But that's not something to sue over. Where, like, uh, they're talking about the idea of the uh, black Bart. Rick Jones. Jones was given the gimmick of being a, quote, bad cowboy with a black hat and long beard by Dusty Rhodes and was given the name Black Bart by, black Bart by WWE as Vince McMahon wanted to, quote, own your name. Well, we just saw, uh, we were talking about the Cody Rhodes thing. They do want to own your name. Now, Black Bart, is that going to come off a little bit uh, dicey? Yeah. But you don't go, like, take somebody to a court and go, well... I got head problems, and they're kind of racist. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> what? This, this actually like destroyed the credibility of their initial lawsuit. It did. Uh, yeah, like the fact that they're just grass- they're just trying to pile it on and hope something sticks at this point, so everyone else has a leg up to challenge it on similar basis. But the fact is, it's not going to work. Um, the I can't see how WWE is liable for anyone having any head issues. The fact is, regardless of if their schedule's more hectic than what you were doing on the independent scene, you were still taking those bumps on the independent scene. You were still getting those concussions. You, you don't know if you got they, them from there. You don't know if you got them from the WWE. And in addition to that, you also signed up for that schedule. Mm-hmm. You signed up for that type If of there's work actual too. evidence of them going, don't get medically, don't get checked out, you're fine, then I'm totally cool with them if they've you just know. sent them out there. But other than that, fuck them. I think the only thing that might work would be if WWE knew about some like that risks and like if they knew more than other wrestlers and they were purposely not telling them mm-hmm. about a lot of his stuff. That that might be the only way that the the wrestler or those who are suing might get anything out of this. So they would probably need a former WWE doctor to come out or something like that. But it, it and at I that don't point, think the doctor would be willing to ruin his credibility over that. So I don't think yeah. that's gonna work. Right. Um, this is just so such bullshit, and it's a shame because the people that legitimately do have a reason to possibly sue or to seek any kind of legal uh, course of action are gonna look like they're freeloaders, like these people. It's just it's ridiculous. It's just it's weird now because we have all these people. Like people have taken concussions, and co- concussions, and concussions. We have people like Chris Benoit who had like a terrible looking brain afterwards. But then we, nowadays we've known more and now we have Dana Bryan who's retired at 35 because mm-hmm. WWE refuses to allow him to wrestle in that company. So we've just made advances. I, I feel, I, I feel bad for these people because they didn't have the same technology and they didn't know as much then as we do now, but that's life. And like and 30 also, years. You remember back in those days, um, pretty much until like this more recent new era, guys would hide their injuries, not because there was always this myth that you have to hide it out of fear of a, the company will be mad at you. That shit dates back to well before then, back when people would just hide it on the um, scene. Or pride. 
on Pride, mm-hmm. exactly. So there's always been this culture of hiding your injuries, and I guarantee you, someone like Chavo Guerrero, who's like old school, he fucking hid his injuries. Mm-hmm. And if you go back to the furthest back people, you know, uh, it's different when you get to like, even like the Ahmed Johnsons and stuff, but like Jimmy Snuka, you mean to tell me that any of the other territories that you worked for were doing better than what WWE was trying to do for you? <laughs> Bullshit. Well, see, I bet he had some say in his finisher uh, of like the Superfly part. I bet a few times the head connected on that, so I bet that might be why he's a little butthurt about it. Hmm. I just think that this is so ridiculous, and I hope that it gets squashed real fast. As much as yeah. I, I agree when we were talking earlier about like it's bullshit, WWE is not letting Cody use the name. Got to side with WWE on this one. Hey, but hey, listen, if they really want it to be squashed sooner rather than later, they need to get uh, right back. You know, just have them do a squash match, you know? Shut the uh, fuck up, Drew. Let's move on to a kind of quick thing <laughs> that I, I thought was going to be a bigger topic, but it kind of just disappeared out of nowhere. When SmackDown was broadcasting last night, we're recording this Wednesday for those listening to Smack Talk, the first match, they played the match during the commercial break. How awesome yeah. was that? I thought it was interesting. I mean, it was cool in a way that they, I've seen them do this before. It's either that or I've dreamt about this because I've I feel like that's happened before. But I just thought it was weird they did this during the opening match and not the main event where the WWE Championships on the line, where people might be more invested to stick around and watch it during the commercial breaks. I think they. I think it's cool that they used it. They they just had poor fucking timing of when they used it. It was cool, but it fucking sucked at the same time. I didn't see it. Are you saying like they made the match on a smaller screen and the advertisements come up on a bigger one? Yeah, yeah. they kind of like split the screen in half. Oh, so you mean like most sporting entities do? Fuck yeah. me, behind the times, aren't they? Yeah, but see, it was pretty much set up kind of like when they do the replays. They'll have, like, the small screen in the upper right-hand corner, and then they'll show the replay on the big screen. It was, they pretty much took that graphic, but they just played a commercial during it. Mm-hmm. And I believe they played – and you, the match audio wasn't on or, you know, the TV audio. It just yeah, like, it was playing fun. the commercials. Yeah. But it was cool. It was interesting. And they they and, definitely utilized that more. I mean, they have, exactly. I, by the sounds of it, their display wasn't perfect, but they can work on that. Yeah. But here's hopefully, the thing. this They've been is do- them saying that they're testing it out. I hope. Uh, this is uh, shit. This is pretty much the second screen thing that they've been doing with the WWE app when they used to play the commercials just on the app. Well, this, this makes this- me happy because this type of shit should have happened like fucking five plus years ago. Yeah. Right. That's one thing I actually really liked about the WWE app was when you would go and watch the show, go to commercial, you put on your tablet or your computer and your app and you watch the rest of it there. And then they come back live. So you didn't miss any of that action. Wait, you actually so, used that? I did. Yeah, I used I, the second I've never screen used experience. Once. <laughs> yeah. Well, well the back only when they time, did it, they don't do it anymore. But I know. The, yeah, the, I only time, that... the only time that I did it was the one time they actually finished the match during a commercial. And I was like, fuck me. So I did it the next week. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is stupid. And I, I just would play it on my phone instead during the commercial. Because I mean, most yeah, of... they got you. <laughs> there, was never, the time... there was never anything really super exciting. You know, okay, one match was finished during the thing. But... Most of the time, it was just for continuity's sake. You know, I don't no. want to stop watching for five minutes and watch pizza commercials or whatever the fuck. <laughs> Dude, I, I want pizza commercials. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Pizza commercials are some of the best commercials out there. Oh, what? what the hell? Well, that was a coin that just dropped. I okay, cool. Good deal. <laughs> yeah. Drew <laughs> uh, wants uh, pizza. Wait, so wait, bad. wait, 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 wait. Speaking of things getting interrupted. No, I didn't want the match to get interrupted. Just like I didn't want this podcast to get interrupted with throwing coins. I wasn't throwing it. I dropped it. Come on, the only person that throws anything on this podcast is when Peyton watches other people like Roman Reigns throw stuff. Yeah, you're but bad. I w- just abandon the joke. Drew. Okay, but the thing is, <laughs> was it heads or tails? Ugh, let's take a look. It was heads. Always heads. Ugh. But we, we should have bet. Oh, I maybe mean, I should have. But <laughs> hey, but I, I will say the second screen thing. I thought it was interesting, but most of the time. Especially when you go to a like a, a Monday Night Raw and they do the uh, like commercial break, it's usually a rest hold or it's like a crowd interaction where the the face does something to the crowd to get them cheering or booing. So it's never anything interesting. So I'm glad that they they're starting to use it. But I mean, I think it was cool. But I'm not going to be upset if they didn't because most of the time during commercials, I'm either getting something to eat or I'm just playing on my phone until it comes back on. I hope that they keep doing this going forward because why not? 
I do yeah. too. Cause that's one of the most bothersome things I think when watching raw is that mm-hmm. you're into your, especially when you're invested in a match it's like, Oh wow, this match is really good. And then, okay. And as raw rolls on and it's like, fuck, I wanted to see that actually. And it'll be better so, for the people in the crowd too, because they won't have to sit through a rest hold. Yeah. Hey, hey guess what? You know, where, when they don't do this, they do it during pay-per-views. Boom. Uh, apparently, there was a fight backstage at SmackDown. Sin Cara <laughs> and Simon Gotch got into some sort of a backstage altercation in the catering area. But so far, no reports have said exactly what or what happened. So, speculation. I'm going to say Simon Gotch fucks Sin Cara's uh, mom. I accidentally <laughs> dragged my wire out, so I heard Simon Gotch and Sin Cara got in a fight. Do we know who won? Nope. Uh- I, I, I low key think it's Simon Gotch constantly going, dude. I can't understand you. What are you saying? Because of the stupid mask is in the way. Question: I, Which Sinkara beat up Seamus? The first original one, I think. Hmm. Not the. This one's the Unico one. I don't think it was Unico. You know what? I'd take Unico over him. Over Simon Gotch. Mm-hmm. But he's a old school manly man. <laughs> Dude, he's the wimpiest looking manly man ever. <laughs> My one, th- the one thing I always say about that gimmick, it's, it's good if they had two bodybuilders, but they are so fucking skinny and short. It's awkward as fuck. That's, I think they're yeah. arguing over. I think you're missing the point of the gimmick. I think they're arguing over. You're more irrelevant. No, you're more irrelevant. But yeah, well, your partner's gonna fuck up his promo later. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get to that in the next segment. Yeah. But, uh, well, well, but Tony, see, they're not partners anymore. They had to mention it a number of times on SmackDown. We're going to get to that, too. Uh, the last hot tag I have written down here is uh, they've given us a little bit of a, an insight of what the commentary teams are going forward. They're changing it up a little bit. Michael Cole, Byron Saxton, and Corey Graves from Monday Night Raw. JBL is going to be with Mara Ronaldo and David Otunga for SmackDown. And Tom Phillips is going to be the head of both main event and superstars. And he's going to be joined by the two people from those two kind of adjoining uh, recordings. Since Otunga is on SmackDown, Otunga is going to join Phillips for main event. And since Corey Graves is on Raw, he's going to do superstars with Tom Phillips. So basically, we're going to kind of keep things around the same, but we're going to switch up JBL and Corey Graves. What do you guys think? I don't know. I like the dynamic of Cole and JBL together. I like how they work, but... I don't no, know. not anymore. It's not anymore. I, fucking bad. I'm worried about this. I'm worried how JBL's going to gel with Ronello because That's what Ronello I'm and King are a fucking awesome duo. I love those guys. Um, it, King got new life brew and breathed into him. Uh, it's going to fucking suck with him and Cole again. Was was SmackDown the, his first appearance back uh, for Jerry? Yeah. The Lawler, by the way, is no, he was just there doing the ago. pre-show panels now with Booker. That fucking sucks. He was, yeah. Well, you, like he's being on point again. I guess they're gonna try to transition him out of it, you know. God, you can't even beat up your fucking girlfriend. <laughs> I, I, I solely think it's just because of that. I think they want to keep him out of the limelight for a little bit. I bet at some point, I mean, shit. Do you really think David Otunga or Corey Graves is gonna be around forever? Don't be Maybe. surprised if in a few months, if Jerry's back on the SmackDown side of things. Maybe they trot him out for a pay per views and shit. That's what I think, the pay-per-view pre-show kind of panel. Tunga, I don't think he'll be lasting all that long. I think Graves is here to stay for a while. I hope so. That, disappointed that Otunga's getting the spot. I don't really like him. Yeah, not a fan of Otunga, but I like oh. Corey Graves. Uh, I'm more of an Otunga guy than I am a Corey Graves guy. I think Corey Graves is a little overrated as a color commentator. I, I can I can buy that. I, I, I don't think he's bad by any means, but... I think for a heel uh, color commentator like he is most of the time, I just think he's a, he's a little generic for it. But I, it doesn't mean he's bad. I, I'm I'm all for change. I think it'll be better than JBL on Raw because I've been annoyed with JBL and Cole for a while. The, the biggest shoot <laughs> with the Michael Cole JBL dynamic is them fucking just like goofing off. Sometimes they just fucking like entertain each other. Instead of calling yeah, them but that's what we do on this show. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say. Okay, we're not broadcasting to the fucking WWE why a match is going on. Or are we? No, I don't see. That's the thing. <laughs> I, I'm. If they were to just stick strictly to the match of what they're supposed to do, it's fine. But 
it's really fucking annoying when they just start laughing or not, and about shit that's only funny to those two and not funny to anyone else. I bet uh, one, you I, made a dumb reference. Uh, let's make fun of that. Uh. But, but the best part is, you know, Vince is probably laughing in the, in the microphones as well while that's all that's happening. So it was all okay for a while. All right, guys. Well, those are the hot tags of the week. Make sure you leave your comments below. Tell us what you think of these different subjects. Normally, we'd be taking a break right now, but instead, we have some big stuff to talk about. The WWE Draft Breakdown is coming up in Part 2. Make sure that you click on that, and we'll see you there.